you don't pay your tithe, things will be tight for you. So these people keep bringing into the storehouse. Do these storehouses never have a time for opening up? Don't they ever get filled? Are they the bottomless pit? They keep swallowing and swallowing. There's nothing to bring out. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Zumi and today I wanted to talk about a video that I came across that is so heartbreaking. It is just so gory. And it's not something that I would ordinarily watch as an individual because I, I can't stand blood. I can't stand sensitive videos. They will keep replaying over and again in my mind for years to come. But when I swiped away from it on my WhatsApp, um, I don't even know who sent it to me. Um, the Spirit of God just kind of prompted me to go right back to that video because it was more or less like it's easy to keep swiping away from uncomfortable things, especially when it comes to the things that are going on in our nations, in our societies. But he wants us, I felt like he wanted me to look at it, feel the pain, feel the, the his grief at what was in that video so that I can be able to address it and talk about what we as the body of Christ can do. So this video was basically about... Um, I saw like some men, they were, they were harvesting human parts. They were about four bodies and they had been dismembered, like parts of the body had been taken away. And I thought it was a case of maybe people stumbling upon um, people, victims of ritual murder. But then I now saw them, they were kind of opening up the, like the, bo the, 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 the body was already like open, one of the bodies and they opened it up and they were now trying to harvest the part and they were saying something like, um, we are getting rich, we are rich or we have made it. And I realized that these people were basically the ones, they were the people that committed this crime and they are filming themselves um, doing it. And... I felt like it's the, the, the accent of people that were in that video, I feel like it's somewhere in Nigeria that that thing is happening. And I realized that nobody is going to get justice for these people that lost their lives. And it got me thinking about where our country is going to as a people. And I know, and for me, I know that it's always as if I'm trying to find fault with the church. But one thing I have come to realize is that although bad governance and systemic corruption has greatly contributed to what is going on in our societies, what our society has turned into. But I still feel like um, if we as the body of Christ can stand up and own up to our own mistakes, the part we have played in this situation, that is when God is going to step in. So you can say, okay, is it the, people, the church that committed this crime? No, it is not the church. But we're going to look at some of the things that in some of the ways in which the church is contributing and has contributed in times past to what is going on. And if we can humble ourselves and admit these realities, then we can be able to move forward, right? So um, I said here, I'm going to be reading some, some of the notes I made here. I said here that the body of Christ has failed our society. The body of Christ all over the world, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in America, all over the world, we have failed our societies. Why? Because we are called to positively influence our culture by preaching Christ and living lives that glorify God's purpose on earth, not just to do miracles. So what am I trying to say? We are called to be um, cultural and social influencers for the kingdom of God. We are called to preach Christ. Preaching Christ is not about talking about his miracles. And that is where we've gotten it wrong. The Bible says that Jesus, how Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with Holy Ghost and power and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed for God was with him. So doing good is what lies within our power, physical power. Jesus, first of all, did good. And because he had compassion and he was willing to do good out of his human ability and what was available to him, God would step in from time to time to take that good to another level by making it a miracle. But nowadays, we are now making it as if preaching Christ is all about doing miracles. You know what? I even used to have this kind of mindset. I remember, you know, back in the days when I would see people that are maybe church churches, maybe in, in the western part of the world, they are giving wheelchairs to people. I'm like, wow, the power has gone away from the church. Why should we be sharing wheelchairs when we can pray and they will be healed? But the reality is that we have been waiting for so long. 
because it's like there's no more empathy there's no more compassion and if we don't have compassion and we're just like i need power i need power because when we are looking for that power most of the times it's, it's just for us to see it show that god is with us i am that man of god it's not the power to change the lives of people because if we really want to change the lives of people if we really want to empower people if we really want to help them to reach their fullest god-given potentials we'll be like even if i don't have that miraculous power i will find a way to empower them jesus when he did the miracle of feeding the five thousand with loaves of bread five loaves of bread and two fish he didn't have any miraculous powers at that point basically he just started with what was available so many of us we we are clinging on to what we have as a church but we are not willing to start with that if we can start with what we already have as the body of christ if we can start with what we can offer to help people to alleviate human needs, then God will step in with miracles. That is why we are not seeing miracles. So what I'm trying to bring out here is the, one, the first way that we as the body of Christ have failed our societies is that we are waiting on God for miracles when he has already given us the power to do good as a body and as individuals. And it is sad that even some churches are teaching that we don't have to help the poor. That if you want to be rich, you sow into the life of someone that is already rich. So this is affecting the way. And when they are like in a church, in, in, in a society that identifies as Christian, when majority of the people are having this kind of mindset, waiting for miracles and not stepping in to do what they can from their own power, doing good according to what they can, then that is how our, our societies begin to go downhill. The second way that our, our churches have contributed to the downward trend in our societies and the moral values of our cultures is that people are resorting to crime out of hunger out of lack out of poverty but yet the storehouses that have been taken and taken haven't been opened up opened up now the bible says for those of us that we are like okay we must pay tight the church has to pay tight the Bible says, bring you your, the tithe into my storehouse so that there will be food in my storehouse, right? So this tithe was supposed to be brought in so that when there is need, it can be used to help the people. And that is why if we look at when David was hungry, the showbread was brought, it's part of what is made holy onto the temple. But when he came, the priest there was willing to give it to him. And God didn't strike him dead because he ate something that was consecrated. No, it is meant for the people. So what am I trying to say here? I have heard one of the pastors that is very popular doing in quotes miracles and all that. And everybody is calling his name. This pastor said that the church is not a charity organization. If you're saying that the church is not a charity organization, how about the early church? There was a government, if we are expecting the government to do, we've waited for the government. They're not helping us. Some con yes, in some Western countries, yes, the government is doing what they can. But in places like uh, in Africa, like in Nigeria, for example, which is where I come from, we don't, the government is not really doing anything. The citizens there don't have any, we don't have any value to the government, right? So what I'm trying to bring out here is during the time of the early church, there was the Roman government. They were the colonial, they, they were the people that were colonizing these people are, as at this point, right? But they were not really doing anything. So the government stepped in, I mean, the church stepped in to help the widows and the orphans and all that, and those that were needy in the church. That was what the things that people were bringing to the disciples of Jesus, the apostles. That's what those things were used for. But our churches today, our people are hungry. People are in lack. People are in need because there's no social amenity. There's nothing put in place to help buffer up those that are trying to stand. People have tried and tried. But the church is still demanding, bring your food into the storehouse. If you don't, if you don't pay your tight, things will be tight for you. So these people keep bringing into the storehouse. Do these storehouses never have a time for opening up? Don't they ever get filled? Are they the bottomless pit? They keep swallowing and swallowing. There's nothing to bring out. So that is one thing. Then these churches, if they just manage and do one small charita charitable thing, they will gather everybody and say, come and see us. So see, we are doing it. After now, you say we're not doing it. That is not enough. We need to find a place to step in and help these people. If we've kept receiving and receiving, then it is time to give up. I remember during COVID, how many churches really came out? to, you know, give. They were still like, okay, now that we cannot meet in person, please send us what you can online. This is not okay. This is not how Jesus 
meant for his church to be, right? Then I've talked about David, right? That ate the bread that was meant for the storehouse, that was meant for priests. People's lives are more important than whatever collections we are collecting in the name of God. So the thing is that when people are pushed against the wall, they will end up resorting to crime and animalistic behavior. And I'm, 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 it's not something I'm proud of. I remember one time when I was in school, I was in the university, I ran out of food. For like two days, I didn't have anything. And then at, as at that point, this, the, the drink that my, my roommate had, it was smelling so nice. That was the greatest pressure I had. I was tempted to go and take that, a bit of that drink and just drink it. And I actually poured some. And I actually, but I was, my conscience was like, you can't do this to me. You're a child of God. I put my finger and I dipped it on my tongue. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? I ended up pouring it back in the cup for, for you know, back in the container where I took it from. And then I spat out whatever I had put in a dip to, to put on my tongue. I was so ashamed. And I was just like, God, forgive me. But what am I trying to say? Something that I would never in my whole life have considered doing. I ended up doing it because I had spent like two days or so. I didn't have anything to eat. And there was no hope of anything coming. In the end, God did help you know, provide for me through somebody else. But I'm just trying to say that when people don't have, they can be pushed against the wall. Even in the Bible, there was a time when the women in Israel, there was a bad famine. And they started taking the lives of their babies. And, you know, using them as food. And that was an abomination in the sight of God. And God had to do something. So what I'm trying to bring out here is that in our countries, especially in Nigeria and in many African countries where we are so religious, where we are so spiritual, people are dying of hunger. People are so hungry. They are putting forth their hands to wickedness. They are, put, they are, they are, as in we, we, they are now living instinctively. Like, what can I, where can I get the next meal? What can I do next? People are putting out their children, their daughters, to go out there and sell themselves to bring food for the family. And the church is still there claiming power and asking that we should bring more, bring more if you don't bring. That is why a lot of people are leaving the church. That is why people are like, God is not real. It is because the church is not doing, we're not occupying, we're not doing what God is expecting us to do, to stand in the gap and to provide succor and to help people to go beyond that, you know, level of, instinctive living. If we look at Abraham Maslow's law, hierarchy of needs, people cannot talk of spirituality, people cannot talk of dreaming of a better society and all that when they don't have food to eat. So why is it that the church will not help? People are, that are doing better are bringing, even the poor are bringing, but nothing is really coming out of the coffers of the church to help those that are struggling, to just stand on their feet. This is just not okay. Let us stop sugarcoating things. The third way that we as a church, the body of Christ, have failed our societies is the kind of messages that we preach. If we remember in the Bible, the Bible says that Philip went to Samaria and he preached Jesus. And when he preached Christ, Jesus, and his kingdom to the people of Samaria, these people turned away from occultism and diabolical practices. And this is how we occupy for God until Jesus comes. Because Jesus said, occupy till I come, right? We are called to influence you know positive and culture uh, positive cultural and social change in our societies by practicing kingdom principles but instead we're preaching prosperity healing oh god will give you babies and all the good things of life you know being miraculously provided for us so when we're always preaching god is going to break protocol for you he's going to break protocol and bring these things to you magically then why and, and even another thing self, when people keep preaching and saying not only will he break protocol those that need to be taken away those that need to exit this world for your sake will exit so that you will shine why won't these people become comfortable comfortable with taking other people's lives through ritual murder in order to make you know miraculously get rich so this idea of telling people that you don't need to work hard even god himself can just he loves to break protocol for people that have never really done anything much if we the more we are teaching these kind of things when the other side comes to them and says hey you know what we you if you just take bring your mother or your brother or your sister or your wife or your child and we just take their lives then suddenly you're going to become wealthy why wouldn't they accept it after all jesus is doing it he's taking the other people's lives as we are teaching him teaching them but this is not the Bible. This is not the scripture. This is not what the scripture teaches. Okay? If we look again, there, there was a riot at Ephesus, I believe, 
where the people, the people that make idols, they were shouting and saying, you know, Paul and his disciples, they need to go away because that these people that turn the world upside down have come. So these people, their own sort of livelihood is they make idols so that they can sell it to people and tell them, okay, these things will miraculously make your land fertile and you'll have good harvest. And then these people are coming and saying, no, there is a real way to do it. It is a life of submission to God. It is a life where we walk with our hands to eat. Let he that will not walk, not eat. And all those kind of Bible, pray, I mean, pray, uh, um, kingdom principles. These are what the, the, the early disciples were teaching. They were giving up their all, supporting each other. But sadly, our churches today are even now going to these idol makers and people that sell diabolical power to go and get the power that they will use to impress you and tell you that God can do miracles. What a shame. What an abomination. So there's so much we could talk about. But what I want us to take away from here is this. When you see all those manner of wickedness, people are being kidnapped, people are being, you know, their lives are being taken, and there are a lot of things that are going on, people that are stealing, people that are committing robbery, and all manner of wicked stuff in our societies, especially in Africa and all over the world, but especially in Nigeria. If we see them, we don't say, oh, it is well, it is the government, don't mind them. If we, as the body of Christ, we are playing, a, we have play, played a role, and we are still playing a role. And Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So even if we didn't like physically go there and be a part of the people that were opening up these human bodies and harvesting whatever they were harvesting, we have played a part because some of those people that are doing these things, they didn't have it in them to commit those kind of crimes and atrocities. But they have been pushed against the wall. There was no food for their children. There was nothing provided. There was no hope from the government. There was no hope from the church. And then they were pushed against the wall. And they became like animals. So we are guilty. And until we own up to our guilt, like Daniel that cried and said, I and my fathers have sinned. Like Ezra in the Bible that cried and said, I and my fathers have sinned. Until we come to that place where we humble ourselves and take personal responsibility for the downfall, for the decadence in our societies, things are never going to change. You can pray all you want, but there is also blood. The blood of some of these people is on our head because we have what it takes, but we have chosen another path. And then finally, this is an, a call for you personally as an individual to weep for mercy and begin to think about what you as an individual can do to ensure that your neighbor right beside you is not pushed so hard against the wall that they begin to do all manner of atrocities. Stop thinking that you want, I better pass my neighbor. I want to be better than my neighbor. If you become way too better than your neighbor and there's nothing provided for, for them, then you and your family will be the target. I pray that the Lord will give us the humility to receive this word and to act on it. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.